and the gains to the public sector of actually able to do that traceability for medical devices are pretty clear uh, because there's huge problems uh, in the supply chain already with fraud, uh, so devices being stolen, uh, with uh, devices being lost, devices being repurchased. This is all stuff that people have looked to solve with the uh, so the, with, for example, RFID, but the, fo the problem is the focus specifically uh, on the hardware, which is actually not what's important. It's about the data and capturing it in the right place and being able to feed that uh, analytic information to you. Nobody, I hate to experiment, it's hard, but nobody does it quite uh, like they do. Uh, so the third case that I wanted to talk about uh, was actually in the construction sector. And the construction sector has a lot of problems with it, as uh, I don't know if we have anyone here from that sector. But uh, essentially, the, what we're doing with them is we're building a kind of MOT for buildings. This is the kind of stuff that came out. Uh, you may have seen the Scotsman article about it. Uh, but it's about the MOT for buildings because a lot of the problems that there are in construction, first of all, it starts early because it starts where an architect designs a building, says these are the materials you should use, and then a building company says, oh, I could bid a very low amount for this and make a lot of money. But then they get to the end of the project, as is quite often the case, and they realize, well, we don't have enough money to deliver this project. And so they cost cut. And so they get uh, lower quality cladding, lower quality insulation, uh, lower quality windows. And actually, there quite often isn't a matchup between uh, what the architect <coughs> decided there should be and what there is at the end. Because at least my experience of talking to architects is despite it being a legal requirement to use BIM uh, in a lot of cases, uh, they either do not or feed it out to third party companies. A great anecdote on that was that I've uh, spoken to quite a few who are not even capable of running the software. It's too intensive for their uh, hardware, despite the fact that it is a legal requirement that they do it. There are very few good proper use cases of uh, BIM. The oil and gas sector does it much better, but uh, the, one of the best use cases, uh, best outcomes for it was actually Queen's Free Crossing, where they did, but where they met their level two quite well. I'm not going to get down into the uh, details there, but we were working with some uh, public sector partners who are, uh, unfortunately at this moment not allowed to name, around doing this exact uh, building LT both for uh, power block type buildings but also for uh, public buildings like police stations, fire, sta fire stations, schools, those types of buildings. Uh, so the fourth one that I want to get onto is another supply chain one around food and drinks. So we're working with uh, Academy, uh, I believe Gary might be here somewhere. Uh, and now that's an interesting one because there are so many problems in the food supply chain, uh, one of which is around ethical consumption. We all saw the horse meat scandal. Uh, now my personal take on that was horse meat is actually better than beef, uh, but you know as a society we choose not to eat it and that's just how it is. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it also creates great economic value because if you can prove that somebody is from Scotland, uh, the research from Interface uh, who are very focused on food and drink related outcomes uh, says that it, you get a 15% premium on, on Scottish salmon, on Scottish whiskey. I mean, I don't know why you drink any other kind of whiskey, but that's beyond me. Um, but it also allows you to actually see uh, some of the problems. So, for example, a lot of the tuna in the UK, uh, we have quite a lot of uh, understanding. There's quite a lot of illegal fishing going on in the, in the Philippines, which is where we get a lot of our tuna from. Uh, but I want to point out, I will be talking about case studies here, because I will, I'm sure I will hear it from you later on, is of course blockchain is not a panacea. When you have that uh, interaction between the physical world and the digital, that creates problems. So, uh, for example, there is nothing stopping you from moving an RFID sticker from a fish to another fish, or you know, a package of fish. Uh, so you have that real world problem. There are some uh, ways of solving it in whiskey, there is, uh, you can use chemicals to give somebody a unique identifier that you cannot remove, and even if you uh, put whiskey in the same bottle, which is actually a real problem with importing to uh, the Far East, uh, it doesn't make a difference. But the problem is that nobody wants chemicals in their whiskey. Uh, the same thing about uh, edible, invisible QR codes, which is something I talked to consensus with recently. But the problem is, uh, people are too risk averse to the thought of eating something that has an identifier on it. But again, these kind of things cause problems. Uh, what I'm going to do next, because uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, is to talk about what we're going to do in the future, which is uh, from today, we're currently we're working on grant proposals with a variety of companies uh, in other use cases uh, worth a couple of million, uh, a little bit more even, uh, around the types of supply chain use cases, some of which we've uh, touched on vaguely today, some of which we haven't. Uh, 
I would also always looking for new research partners because as I said at the start of this, I, I think it's essential that uh, the research that we do in the lab gets out there into industry and has an impact in the real world. I'm not a believer in keeping it uh, in the ivory tower of academia uh, personally. Now, I want, now I'm going to pass over to Bill now, I know this was a little bit shorter than intended but uh, I've been very busy this week. <laughs> And so he, Bill's going to give you an understanding of the technical side to the future that we're going to build, uh, specifically around the stuff I talked about, privacy and enhancing technologies. Usually I would take that for time. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. the advantage of being in the university. And every single day you come across somebody that's just so smart and, and really gets what you want, want to see. And, and that, that's the great thing uh, about working uh, with, with, with universities is to have that, that potential. Uh, so I'm going to take a kind of random walk. I'm a teacher, so I want to teach you some things. So please excuse some maths. I'll tell you when they're going to occur, just in case you, you want to blank out or something. <laughs> I will do some elliptic curve. No, no. no. <laughs> the professor is going to give me homework. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a bit of homework at the end, so that's, uh, that's good. Uh, okay, so the title of this, and you'll you, you never know what you're going to talk about when you get asked to do uh, these things. So I thought, well, uh, go back to Bob Dylan because it all goes back to Bob Dylan. And, and, and <laughs> uh, I should have brought my guitar. I know that. <laughs> and you wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> Especially when I said to sing. existing world crumbling like never before. The rest of our society are almost by the day. We could bring down our whole global finance system in, in, a, in a second. One hack and the SWIFT network, this one here, could be brought down and we're all in financial uh, ruin. This was one hack, 81 million from SWIFT. It happened in the most unfortunate place in the world, in the bank, bank of death, central bank. Sounds very grand, but it wasn't. Uh, we had second-hand switches, no firewall, no 24-7 sock with graduates running the place and so on. This was a very basic infrastructure. And they nearly got away with another 20 million, but they couldn't spell foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Cyber criminals are we dealing with here? Get yourself a license for Grammarly. <laughs> Get the Google. Foundation doesn't work. That, how do you spell foundation? Is it, has it got an A An A? I think it's got an A. You joker, you. <laughs> That's the error correction on Swift. The only thing they checked is that it's got a valid name. That is scary if you ask uh, me. And uh, this one happened. Do you ever know what this one's related to? Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster. 
Ticketmaster had a lovely little uh, integration for their site. You can speak to a non-human and they'll make some sense. And um, uh, Monzo phoned them up and said, uh, have you got a problem with your site? Ah, everything's fine, we're all getting in. so good. Well, 70% of our frauds are coming in from Ticketmaster and you've only got 1%. I think you have a problem. Oh well, yeah, got a problem. <laughs> the JavaScript was integrated and the JavaScript was running off this code that somebody had run and it was soaking off all the credit card details for users. <coughs> Who designs these systems? Isn't, isn't that a kind of fundamental thing? Uh, it happened with the BA. This is the BA, uh, BA site called Degrade. It's not very good. That uh, must do better as a teacher. <laughs> and this is the script for. So they got into the BA uh, Rich Airways, and they were running for three, three, uh, three weeks. At least 350,000 credit cards were stolen. <laughs> Details. If you look here, the bit I found the most funny about this is that these hackers are secure. <laughs> this code sends whatever you post onto the BA site so every single card that was put in was hacked. It gets sent to www.https.bawaze.com. Uh, <laughs> these hackers are good, aren't they? They, have, they set up their own certificate, their own secure site. <laughs> And an incident report, so, uh, you get phoned up on a Friday afternoon. I always can tell, it's got no caller ID, that it's the BBC or Sky. <laughs> and you've got to very quickly see what's actually happened. And it's pretty obvious it was in the browser because of what they were actually saying. Uh, and it was the JavaScript, the JavaScript integration they had, they had hacked into the site, spear phishing, they had modified the JavaScript to add be the, the test. Should be standard tripwire uh, stuff. That's quite worrying because the instant the sport said, it's okay, your passports are all right. <laughs> what did they just say? <laughs> your passports are okay. Well, that's good because that's really what I'm worried about. <laughs> My credit card, is that okay? <coughs> yeah, I think you should change it. <laughs> <laughs> have to scroll down to frequently asked questions. And then the bottom is said, uh, maybe you should change your credit card. <laughs> My advice was, change your credit card details right now. Cancel your cards. You've been hacked. It's not your fault. Uh, but the incident report uh, just didn't highlight that at all. So make sure you, you respond properly with your incident. Okay, so every single slide. I was in Dublin the other day and I got scared to bits because somebody told me that the UK won't be compliant automatically to GDPR and that, that, that sent a cold shiver down my back. So I don't want to depress anybody today, so let's not talk about that. <laughs> GDPR is where we should be and where we have to be if we have at least one EU citizen. In fact, if when I'm trading anywhere in the world, GDPR is the way that it should be done. Encryption is, is standard, uh, citizen rights, instant response, 72 hours, and pseudo-anonymity. I say this every single time, if you can tell me what pseudo-anonymity means, I can't even say it, <laughs> then you're a better professor than me. But maybe we can talk a little bit about that. So now that's what I call the 20th century. So I think we're in the 20th century. Ah, wow, great, got the music back again. <laughs> that we're in the 20th century, why do, we, why do we use passwords? Why do we store them? Why do we pass them? Zero knowledge is there. We don't have to store hashed passwords anymore. Eight characters, I do a demo to students. Uh, two seconds to crack every single uh, eight character password. If you can use squiggles or anything. On the GPU cloud, costs you $10 an hour. They're all gone. Nine characters within a day, 10 characters, within a couple of days, passwords are finished, hash versions, salt. Oh, we use salt. But the hacker can see your salt. <laughs> they can see you. Hello, there's salt there. Oh, we'll get rid of the salt. If you get rid of the salt, then you're not going to get that password back. Uh, and with the GPUs, with GPUs, you've got 4,000 cores. You can buy a GPU cloud instance with 16, 16 GPUs and you can run it up, 
Uh, hackers have been able to take three photographs and end up with the same uh, hash for each of them. That's the processing power that we have. So why do we do that? Why do we do wet signatures? <laughs> why is that still a thing in this century? I, I may be in a minority here, but I cannot understand why my squiggle, my squiggle, <laughs> Squiggle, you must admit. That's my sawtooth, squiggle. That's when I've got a bit of time to do something. <laughs> Most of the time it's joke. Oh, but I've got a swoosh at the end. So do research here about that swoosh. That swoosh, you do a straight line, swoosh, and you can spot who it is. <laughs> uh, that's, I, just, I just find them so funny. And I, any time I put my, my bank details in with pen and paper, I go, this is crazy. This is... This isn't right <laughs> to do this in the 21st century. Uh, so, so <laughs> if you want to see my signature, it's on Twitter. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think that's what my signature looks like. Uh, I've, I couldn't replicate that, but I'm sure you could probably do it. <laughs> uh, it. And there's the nag me signature there if you want that in there too. Uh, that was posted on Twitter. <laughs> So it's not a big secret, is it? Is it? And even still, who knows that that is your signature? If somebody verifies your signature, have you ever done that for fraternity? I get my wife to do it all the time and I get told off. You can't do that, she knows you. Yeah, I know, but she knows me better than anybody else, I hope. <laughs> Can I get my kids to do it? No, no, they know you. Well, I know. <laughs> And they go got to get some strangers. So I used to go down the street and say, well, I'm a professor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's me. And, uh, I've got to be I've got to be told by a solicitor to 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 uh, to show my, my signature. So it's a it's a crazy world and I don't I don't understand it. Why do we fill in forms? Forms are forms. No matter if they're on paper or on electronic. That's just the same thing again. <laughs> We shouldn't have to be filling in forms. Uh, we shouldn't have to be putting in a date of birth and everything again. And the crazy thing is that you press a button to put your signature in. Have you ever done that? I don't understand that. It puts your written signature in there. Oh, 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 credibility is that? I'm a credit professor. <laughs> I want proper keys involved and I want certificates and I want to make it difficult. I'm PKI. Uh, why, why do we have to fill in forms? <coughs> Why do we centralise everything? Aren't we building a world where all our data is just put in one place? If that data was attacked or taken down, we're stuffed because it's gone. <laughs> Why can't we replicate and decentralise? Uh, and then, why can't I trust email? <laughs> Microsoft, please, for goodness sake, you've been at the Outlook for all those years. Why can't I sign it properly in your bar? my emails if I sign. What's your problem? I know people want to snoop on your emails and they don't like that kind of thing, but surely there's a better way than, than email. And please government, recognise me. I know that you, that you like getting my taxis and I know that you like my parking fines and stuff like that, but hello, <laughs> I've got an uh, I'd like to say things and I'd like to find out about things. Why can't we have an electronic record, health record that just shows you what your kid's immunisation is? I mean, that's pretty simple. It's nothing to that. Stick it online and, and we can look after it uh, ourselves. So it's a world that needs to possibly change. So we need to ask ourselves, what is ownership? So this is my card today. Hopefully I've not left the lights on. I'm a bit worried now. <laughs> <laughs> I think my car light's gone for a wee while. I don't know. I don't know. Don't look at that number plate. Okay. <laughs> that was meant to be seen. Uh, I own that car. Anybody else own that car? No? Good. I might sell that car. But I own I mean that car isn't happy because I'm the owner. You see, that's repressive, Bill. And you own me. I'm a slave to you. But I own you. I, I, I think I own you. 
I have that paper somewhere in the drawer that when I come to sell it, I get some, I, I, don't, I have no idea, but you get something to fill in and send it away. And it's really I used to go to a dealer or something like that. It's not that kind of dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come in later. You <laughs> didn't think you'd see cocaine in this, this presentation. <laughs> oh, we won't, we won't cut that. <laughs> you, won't <laughs> you won't see cocaine later, okay? <laughs> Uh, so what is ownership in this digital world? What really is ownership of, of something? What's consent? That's a really difficult thing. People don't understand. They don't get it. Well, consent is just clicking a form. I sent an email. You consent. Uh, T's and T's said that we can do anything. That's fine. Uh, that's not consent. That's not consent at all. You're using all my data for your purposes of making money. Uh, I don't give my consent to that. And then we need to say, it's a country border. Why do we even have borders and things anymore? We all live in a, a virtual world. <laughs> Who cares about physical? Sorry, I'm probably showing my, <laughs> my viewpoints here. But uh, why should we have borders and hard things? They say it's legal there and legal over there. And if I trade over there, then that you're doing that law, I don't understand that. That's, that's a strange uh, world. And then, uh, and then, and then if it's going to show, uh, my car wants to be seen, it doesn't want to be covered up. <laughs> Whose laws do I comply with? Whose systems? And, and that's typically whatever the server is and where the company is registered. So who, oops. That's not good. Uh, so that's just crust there. Let's see if we can get that back. And why does money, <laughs> fiat currency, uh, exist? I have no money. I go past people in Edinburgh. And I'm really sorry. I honestly have no money. And if I had money, I would give you whatever I had. Uh, honestly, I'd let me go and get to. Uh, I, I, I have no concept of, of physical cash anymore. I do everything with my phone. So, why do we even have. Is, is fiat currency a way for countries to control us? Is that what fiat currency is? Where if you have a fiat currency, you have control, you have power. And what's my rights to privacy? Where's my health record? And why won't my council speak to me? <laughs> so, I've always struggled with the term evangelist. I got cybersecurity evangelist of the year. That was nice, but I said, could you just drop the last bit? <laughs> I'm not religious. Uh, I never have been. Uh, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not. I'm an academic. I have rational thought. I look at everything. You just can't. I can't sell something and stick with it. I could never be a politician ever in, in, a, in a million years. So the evangelist term... Go into those knees. Arthritis, go in the name of Jesus. Tumors, go in the name of Jesus. That one call the lupus. Lupus, you bow, devil. You bow to the name of Jesus. Lupus? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's... Keenan, go into those knees. Arthritis, go in the name of Jesus. I should bring along a hanky. Go in the name of Jesus. He's selling a hanky. With oil. You bow to the name of Jesus. Lupus, you bow to the name of Jesus. You go in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, so that, that's, that's an evangelist. <laughs> and, uh, Pastor Kreplin Dollar of the World Changers Church International facing harsh criticism after starting a fundraising campaign to buy this $65 million luxury <laughs> private jet. <laughs> 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 Okay, so that, that's, that's an evangelist. If I told you to buy a 60 million pound jet, I don't think you would follow me at all. So I, I, I'm not, I'm, I, I rationally <coughs> will look at uh, everything. 
Uh, this guy here is a bit of an evangelist. This is uh, John McAfee's tweets. Uh, he tweeted <laughs> things, and the stock price, the, sh the value of each of the cryptocurrencies went up. He's <laughs> He has admitted it. He's a kind of wacky guy. He's a kind of wacky guy. And if you don't get him, that's his personal message for you. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to be in an industry with such characters and wonderful people. I don't know how many uh, guns he has in the back of his car, but it's quite beautiful. So do we have a trusted public sector? So I got this, I don't know if you're a citizen of Edinburgh, I got this, uh, saying that you need to register, there's here's the ID you need. And then I click on the website and it tells me this untrusted connection. It's as if Chrome never happens. This is if 85% of the population use Internet Explorer. Does anybody here, God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> anybody here use Internet Explorer? Not when I said that. <laughs> Not when I said that. <laughs> so then you go to the site and you get that. And then you go to the site. I think this is so funny. Uh, you, said, uh, you go to the site and uh, please be assured that this email is genuine. I don't know if anybody sees the flaw. <laughs> I and the scammer are going, back in the net. <laughs> I'm just sure about to send an email. <laughs> With this link, is it a conclusion? The genuine, so everything's okay. I'll just put, I'll just put my details uh, in there. And uh, so that's the bit to be highlighted there. Please be assured. I mean, the website isn't even even secure, but that's another matter. <laughs> Please be assured that this email is is genuine. I mean, that's 1980s comedy, <laughs> uh, and and you really worry that uh, if we're doing this. So this is the kind of thing I get. This is uh, so I, I, I do network in the highest levels. This is from the <laughs> Secretary General of the UN. Yeah, I don't think it's worth enough to listen to this presentation. Uh, and he promises me quite a lot. I don't know if that's 1.2 trillion, but it's 1.2 million, and uh, everything's fine. Uh, he does actually exist, and then he's there. So, uh, so that's the kind of thing I get tricked with. <coughs> so if I get tricked with that, then I'm going to get tricked by the, by the other thing that we saw. <coughs> yeah. So we need to understand what trust is. And trust just now is about signatures. It's about uh, <laughs> doing our signature like that, doing our signature like that, whenever we meet. But the thing that most people don't get with this binary debate about blockchain is that it's not its past. Bitcoin is, was old. That was, that was the first one that it wasn't very good. And it's running, but it's great because we can learn about it. But the second generation block is the smart contracts. And now the third generation gives us consensus in a, in a minute. But we're still trying to argue Bitcoin. It's gone. Bitcoin's rubbish. Yeah, we know it's rubbish. But it's there, and you don't have to buy it if you want to. But my goodness, with these things, we can buy a whole new world with consensus in a minute. Why does it take a bank three days to clear your money? Because there's a whole lot of bits in between that take in there, but the transaction costs and things like that. So the possibility is there that we can build a new world. And again, there's this, oh, it's not fast enough. There's a whole lot in there, and it's getting faster. If you really want it, if you really trust it, then Ripple is competing closely with, you don't have to buy the cryptocurrency, but the actual methods can compete with Visa. As we've seen, the SWIFT network is hardly the most secure network in the world. Uh, so it's a changing world, and we need to understand that it isn't just a binary <coughs> debate. So, Unfortunately, I'm going to teach you a bit of crypto. <laughs> so you can you can you can go to sleep now for a little while, uh, and uh, it's got nothing to do with the crypto. I thought we'd play some nice music for a little minute. Uh, so, uh, any German speakers? In? Yeah. Good. You're with the same for the rest of that. <laughs> uh, so, so that's 
And uh, our viewpoint is that, is that crypto is the answer. I didn't wear my crypto t-shirt because crypto is seen as cryptocurrency. I see crypto as, uh, as cryptography. Uh, and I think it's a core thing that will build a new trusted uh, world. For us, We've got a world of trends, and we use trends, but it's not working in terms of uh, PPI. So, crypto, if you if you want to know the basics, symmetric key, the workhorse of the industry, AES, we use the same key on the other side, use key exchange to be able to send it over. It's public key. It's the, it's the most important thing. It's this public and the private key that I'll outline in a minute. It's this thing here that was created in the 70s that's now the king of the hill. And it will be the true uh, focus for identity. Hashing, we just hash, simple hash, we take a message and we create a hash uh, of it. Public key, you're not gonna get this. It took me a long time. I'll say it anyway. Maybe someday when you're having your breakfast or something, you go, ah, oh, I get it. And then you'll lose it for a while. <laughs> Our students are like that. They go, oh yeah, I get it, I say. I've lost it again. Honestly, the number of emails that I get, I just don't get it. I say, I don't get it. I say, I'm really worried. Oh, I get it. And the next day, oh, I've lost it again. <laughs> but they get it back in the end, hopefully. Elliptic curve, I'm going to really bore you here. Because uh, I point on the, the beautiful elliptic curve. X squared is equal to Y squared plus 7. It's one that the NSC can't crack. Okay, don't tell them about that. Because there is one that they can't push. <laughs> that they knew they could crack. This one uh, doesn't. So we take a point, an x, y point. I can hear the breath. <laughs> so I go back at school. This is an x, y point. Remember at school, we taught you about x, y points. That's an x, y point, OK? We create a private key, 256 bits, and we create a gradient. Remember at school, we taught you about gradients. You create a gradient, and a point at which it touches the curve again is your public key, an x, y point, 256. 512 bit, uh, that's your keys. That is the most wonderful thing at the current time. Okay, when quantum computers come along and you're watching this video in five years' time, they'll go, look at that professor, he had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quantum computer in my desk. <laughs> Cracks, all that. So that's where we are just now, and it's taken over the world. It's the, it's the key to the, to the future. Sorry, a bad pun there. Uh, and if you want to see what that looks like, oh gosh, numbers and things, that's what your public and private keys can look like. There's the equation here. It's a prime number. It's all prime numbers. It's all nodes. That's what they actually look like. <coughs> so we must ask ourselves, what is identity? What really is your identity? And how can you walk that down to be completely unique on the uh, internet? So I did some searching around, and the images I found were these. Honestly, these were the first ones I found. That one, uh, that one, uh, that one, that one. All people with their ID cards. Can anybody see what those ID cards are? <laughs> what is it? Cannabis. So yeah, it's a marijuana, marijuana ID cards. I think you get them in the US. Uh, it seems to be quite popular. Oh, yeah. I no idea why. <laughs> Doesn't give you a license to grow it. Okay, you got to pay more money for that. I'm not joking. I've got licenses here if you want to put them like that. <laughs> Cut that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. I love this one. Look at that guy's face. <laughs> 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 That's like before. Face recognition could be hacked, fingerprint could be hacked, 
Uh, hand print could be hacked, that's fine. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, passwords. <laughs> the most popular password. Do you know that? Every single time it's right up there. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> People are so lazy that they cannot think of anything more than that. Have you ever seen the Simpsons episode? When he does yes, yes, yes all the time. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, 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 one. That's too much effort. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll go to eight and I'll never think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, caught you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people out there. But the true identity is a private key. It's 256 bit key. This is the number. If you do two to the power of 256, that is the number of keys that you have. So your private key is unique. In the whole time of the planet, there will never be two people, hopefully, that will have the same key that they generate. As long as it's random, okay, that's okay. I know that's a difficult subject to do, but as long as it's random, that is unique. No hacker in the world has the computing power, not even space aliens, I don't think. <laughs> okay, they might have some bad, crazy computing Xbox or something like that, but it's not going to happen. So we, we prove identity through public key. Uh, we do it through signing our data with our private key. And we give it to Bob. Bob proves with our public key. And the two keys work magically together. Don't ever, 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 ever give anybody your private key. Uh, if you lose your key, it's gone. Your money's gone, your identity is gone, and so on. So you need to make sure that that is ultra secure. So I get asked all the time, how should I store my private key? And I say, a paper wallet. So there's me talking about wet signatures, and I say, so you can have that paper. That's the best, the best way to store a, a key that's not actually online. So our smart cities have got the potential to be able to create something that is, is, uh, provides the citizens with uh, a new way of using data. So you, it's really the, the lowest layer, you've got all your inputs, your, your outputs, then you find the services that you're searching for, and these are the basic outcomes for any city. I really love London Open Data because they're using interfaces, KPIs, you can see straight away what they're doing for poverty, unemployment, and so on. I'd love to see Edinburgh of the same thing. I've got a dashboard and see how uh, pollution has been dealt with and so on. So cities really should be defining KPIs and citizens should be able to see exactly how the, uh, how the data has been used to be able to assess these things. So there are many different possibilities, but pseudonymization must be a core part uh, of this. And we need to create what our trust and governance uh, infrastructure. So in terms of true trust, you have digital trust, and users just hope that that all happens. And there's nothing I can do as a crypto professor to say this is AES encryption, the best encryption. I could give you a little colored padlock or something like that. There's very little you can do. It's got to be trusted that what you're using is good crypto underneath and good strong identity and rights. The core of what we need to build is strong governance and, and things that people want to actually use. So the human trust must come with digital trust. That's an old world. Yuck, 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 yuck. And that's our new world much more integrated, much more understanding of the citizen as an entity as, uh, in that, but not as a spying network for the citizens. It will be rejected again in the UK if we go again and say that this is a way to track citizens. It must be a Finland or an Estonia uh, point of view for that. And a healthcare system is very complicated, but it's just code, you could code all the interactions that you have, you can have simple smart contracts to make sure 
the old payment actually happened and everyone knows what's going on and how it all works and payments actually happen. And then we can have the bit in between, which is the trusted bit, and we can push data to, to the uh, citizen and we can make sure that, uh, that their healthcare infrastructure is also uh, being able to, to work because they work in some ways. So what we envision a future healthcare system will look like is that if Bob has type 2 diabetes, he goes and sees that clinician, they sign something, that's an attestation, it then is associated with a citizen and will run smart contracts so that he can now get uh, uh, cheaper medicine because of his condition and so on. I should, at age of 60, be able to walk on a bus in Edinburgh and not have to fill in a form. The bus should know, go happy birthday to you, sir. I get free bus travel. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, that can run off a smart contract. That's not a difficult thing to do. But I should have control as to whether I want to do that or not. And things like prescriptions can just happen. And we can make sure that this all works and it's all identified. But the core is having the private key for the citizen and having control that they allow these things <coughs> to actually happen. So a smart contract might look like this for services and we just tokenize. So why do we talk about pounds and dollars and so on? Why don't we just say it's a set number of health tokens, cast them in, cast them out, and we can write our contract <coughs> in that way. So I'm not going to talk about Estonia. I did talk about it there, but that slipped. I'm not going to talk about Estonia. There you go. <laughs> First time ever, I'm not going to talk about Estonia. I'm going to talk about Liechtenstein. What? <laughs> I'm going to talk about Liechtenstein. Anyone know where that is? It's not a geography uh, class, so don't worry. And Liechtenstein is the most advanced place in the world that I've actually seen. Okay, so this is the old banking system. This is the new one. I went to Jersey to give a presentation, and Jersey is a very trusted finance sector, but they're looking at, at uh, tokenization. Uh, for their economy, but they've got to make sure that they don't get, they don't uh, sully their reputation. So we've really got to watch when we're moving towards a tokenization economy that we could be causing problems and scams and, and so on. So some countries around the world, and Liechtenstein is one that actually has drafted a blockchain act. And you go, yes, come on UK, come on Scotland, come on Edinburgh, let's start the talking now, because these, these guys are getting it sorted, they're getting lawyers to talk to techies and crypto guys, and, and it's all kind of going to work, hopefully. And what they want to do is to enable a real transformation of blockchain systems by ensuring legal certainties, thereby opening up an application for a full potential of a token economy. In five years' time, when somebody watches this presentation, they go, yeah, that's happened. <laughs> Token economy happens. But now, Leeks and Stein are the first to actually look to create that, that foundation. So what they define is there's not just one token, there's three tokens. Payment token, and that's what everybody understands. We get a security <coughs> token, that's your ownership of something, and a utility token. So when I got on the bus in Edinburgh, I used the utility token uh, because I have a token on here uh, that I just pass to, the, to the, the driver. So those are the types of tokens. And what we need to understand is that how do you own that? How do you give it possession to somebody and how do you transfer it? So the legal industry needs to start to talk about these new things called tokens and see them in the same way as we would money or possessions. Buying a car means that I have a token for that car. You cannot say that I don't own it because here's the token. I have it now and when I pass it on to somebody else, there's a legal transaction that will make that happen. It's so simple. And you just, what's stopping us from just rewriting all our laws, replacing things with tokens just makes so much sense. 
And the core of it is that you have your private key. The private key will define who owns something. You might have a custodian who looks after your private key for you. Maybe it's a solicitor that will take over your tokens that you trust, and they will do the transaction for you. But the whole concept is it's not necessarily you that has that. So these are the, if you're interested, these are what they've drafted. Go and comment if you want. They'll not listen to you because you're, you're a Scottish citizen. <laughs> you have no right to, in Liechtenstein to tell them what to do. They're a confident little, little country and they can go ahead and do it. And we're a big, big country and if they were a big ship to turn around. But I would say if you believe in this, then why not tell your government that we need to create a tokenization world and, and create this put digital assets. Uh, who knows who owns a painting? Uh, if you have the token for it, I can prove the crypto way that I actually own something. Very little can be trusted apart from that. So what does a tokenization world actually look like? Well, we've tried this before, and we've tried to fake things by like giving fake numbers and have a surrogate number in a database, but it's really easy to guess that and to link that back to the person. So surrogate IDs never really worked because they can be easily uh, traced. A token world is a much more secure world that we just cash in for a few tokens, we spend them, and the maximum we're going to lose is those tokens. So we do it at the casino, we wouldn't walk in with a million pound. I know you're not going to do that, but we would walk with a million pound in your pocket, you would get some tokens, and cast them in and walk about get more tokens, usually. And we're quite happy with that world. We just deal with tokens. Low security, high security. So a tokenization world actually starts to make everything a token. So everything here is highly secure, and we just have an exchange that deals with tokens back and forward, and everything is anonymized here, where we have sensitive information there. So a lot of banks are moving towards a tokenization infrastructure. We set up a tokenization service server, which is highly secure. The token comes in, gets processed, they ask questions about the token, and it returns back from here. The personally sensitive information, if you need it, is in here. I'm never here at all. In this way, you can guard your whole data uh, infrastructure. And this is the way that we need to move. So this is Visa's best practice for tokenization. So if you're implementing that, that's the crypto that you use, you should be running all that kind of thing. And hopefully if you're a bank, you're kind of running that anyway. But this is like Fort Knox in here. And you make sure that your tokenization infrastructure, the place that keeps the sensitive information, is highly uh, secure. In that way, we can create fake tokens. So in this case, we trick the whole of the credit card infrastructure take this fake CDV number, it's not the real one, it's a fake one, but we get a token back which pretends to be original, <coughs> we pass that on, the price sale is okay with it because it looks like a credit card and so on. We go to the merchant and then they take the token back to the tokenization server and say, does Bob have enough money in his account? Yeah, he has, that's fine, and, and it's paid. So we give away too much information and we really should be just creating tokens for our, our data and hiding it. And this is interesting because this is a, this is a, a, a format preserving encryption. <coughs> you, you can have a look online to see how this works. But we create a nonce value that if you want, the user can have it on their phone and they can have control of it. That then encrypts the strings to produce something that looks perfectly valid. So format preserving encryption allows you to say I want something that looks like a credit card. In this case, that's a fake credit card, but to reverse it requires the nonce to go back. So it's really interesting technology, and I think that's to me the next step before we go to through blockchain is towards this type of thing that actually starts to tokenize, but still is allowed to use SQL and all the other systems in there. This is honey encryption, if you've seen it. The problem with encryption is that I keep trying keys and it gives me an exception, 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 and then all of a sudden it doesn't give me an exception and go, I've got your key. 
So any encryption allows you uh, to, to not create an exception every single time uh, and that you'll get a valid credit card coming back when you try each key. So the hacker cannot tell that they've been successful in their encryption. So this is honey encryption and it's an interesting method. Just now what we do, I don't know if you know that we all have a Kai number in Scotland and it's not a big secret and every single medical record has the Kai number on it. That worries me like anything. Uh, basically every single medical record and they want to create a unique ID for everyone in Scotland. And once someone knows your ID, they'll be able to trace everything across councils and things like that. So it's quite worrying that uh, you have that. In the future, what you have is that the user can store a salt value. We take the user's ID and we hash with salt and we hash with salt and we hash with salt. So the only way that you can trace the medication record is to look through the ledger and to be able to trace with the salt and the original ID, to be able to trace all of the transactions uh, in, in there. So that's a much better approach to anonymization and allows you to be able to create a large ledger uh, where the citizen would have control of their data. So the thing that's happening just now is, uh, is uh, uh, Casper and uh, and uh, Casper and sharding. So these are the methods that have been proposed to be able to create a, a new uh, internet. So we saw the crypto kitties. People were worried that we'd actually got to the limit of the possibilities. So we got some really horrible cats in there. <laughs> I didn't want to own those, I don't know. But the, the thing about CryptoKitties is they thought they were going to break the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So what happened there, you can see here that the transactions have actually uh, increased. So there's a, a general worry about the transaction fees. The Ethereum is still not fast enough to be able to uh, process in the way that the Visa did. So this amazing genius guy, <laughs> He just comes up with really wacky ideas that kind of work all the time, has come up with the new models, and it's called sharding. And with sharding, what we do is we split up the blockchain into little islands, and each island can actually operate on its own, and we create a ledger for each island. Then if each island enter trade, then you keep a ledger just for that trade between the islands. And this way, the whole ecosystem can work just in the same way that we would do in the past when we had privileges and, and so on. So this is the way that uh, sharding uh, will, will actually work. And it's only when we go between two shards do we have to keep a record of the transactions that happen uh, in between. And the other thing about the, the new Ethereum infrastructure is it moves away from the horrible proof of work very costly towards a proof of stake. Uh, and there is some transaction fee in here, but we can make sure that we're dealing with trusted <coughs> entities and it's not just that you can actually prove that you've done the work or not. So I'd like to show you a bit of crypto. And the uh, cyber criminals don't deal with the Bitcoin as much anymore. The cyber criminals currency of choice is Monero and the reason they use Monero is that Monero are working through an anonymization of both the sender and the receiver and the transaction value. The problem with Bitcoin is that it gives away your identity. Like it or not, if I know that your identity is that, I can trace every single transaction you've made and I'll probably eventually end up knowing everybody that you've uh, uh, make payments to. I know that you pay ten pounds a, 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 a month to British Gas, so I'll work out that, that this ID is British Gas. And this is okay for law enforcement because they now have tools that can mine all these things and look at the patterns and, and so on. So the problem is, is that this gives away both the sender and the receiver and the amount. So it's it's well known. So that's what it looks like, that's your private key, it produces your public address, 
from the that key, you produce the public key as you saw, and you take a hash, and that gives you the ID. You can't go back from there to there. That's just not possible. I do get asked that. I wonder why. I have a public key. Can I get somebody's private key? Why? <laughs> are you trying to hack that account? These are really interesting. <laughs> Some people have got more money than sense or more time on their hands. These people have managed to create an ID. I don't know if you know how difficult that is. You've got to do a lot of computation uh, to detach, detach the bolt. I don't know if it's a word. They have managed to get an ID with uh, normal hex characters in there. Huddle. Huddle in there. It's, uh, it's crazy. So this is what we do, we sign with our private key and then we prove it in a public <coughs> key, we put it on the blockchain and everybody proves that, that we've signed over to ours because we've, we've put our <coughs> public key on, on the blockchain. Uh, so you had to get a picture of Donald there. So Donald's quite worried because he's suddenly leaked information and he doesn't know who it was. So what we do is we create what's called a ring signature and a ring signature allows a whole lot of people to get together and sign for something, and Donald cannot tell who it was, but he knows that some people have actually signed it. So this is the way it does it, and I'm not going to go into the crypto, you can go online and have a look at it, but basically you gather together a whole lot of public keys, you take your own private key, you flip it, you create a backdoor function, and you send it out, and you sign for the whole group. It was created by uh, Ron Revest a while back, but this is the way we create anonymity on, on, on Monero. We create a ring signature. You get enough people who have the same transactions as you, uh, and the same levels, get all the public keys, and publish the ring signature, so you know at least one person has signed for that. Do you notice there's the mask behind it? Uh, it took me a while, but we the Wikipedia page. It's rubbish. Uh, and it's quite simple. Uh, it looks a lot com more complicated. There's a Python. That's a Python geek. <laughs> and I chose Python. That's all you need to create the, the ring signature. Uh, and that's the verification. So the other thing that we have is what's called a stealth address. With a stealth address, what happens is that Bob knows that he wants to pay Victor. So he sends <coughs> uh, some sort of secret to Victor. Victor then creates a new private key, which will then create a public ID that Bob knows what to, who to send to. So Victor now has a short amount of time to grab that money. So basically, Bob posted this new stealth address that's been created. Victor knows it's going to be there. He then goes there, takes the money out, transfers it into another account because it's going to be anonymized uh, anyway. So that's the way that Monero does it uh, now. So that's the mask behind it if you're really interested in it. And they did it. They just went to say, yeah, on September we're just going to change over and everything will be anonymized. And they, they went ahead and they implemented it and it does do it. It's the scariest thing for law enforcement ever. It's the scariest thing for anti-money laundering. And how are we going to catch criminals in the future? We've just created something. It's a beast. But no, it's right. It's right because we're preserving privacy and anonymity and consent and so on. So it happens just now with Tor. If you are a cyber criminal or a terrorist, then Tor is the, is the, is the, is the choice for the connection. If you ever did it, each one gets a key. You encrypt as an onion. So when it gets to here, it encrypts to get that. You then encrypt with the green key, you encrypt the red key, and none of the nodes can actually see. Unless you law enforcement and you manage to get all of you, your jackpots up. <laughs> it has happened. Academics have done that. Sat, sat on the Tor network for a long enough time to become the whole chain, and ethically that's a bit dodgy. So you wanted to see cocaine today? I think you did, yeah. <laughs> so let's have a look at some cocaine. <laughs> So this is the Tor network, if you've ever seen the dark web. We, we have a little web, you know that little, little web that we've got. There's a much bigger web, the deep web, and the dark web, okay? 
Please shut your eyes if you're sensitive to anything here. This is what the dark web looks like. I purely went there for research, <laughs> nothing else. But I've got stuff here. <laughs> I love this. I'm not a webmaster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a webmaster, I'm a professional drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's guns in the UK. That's what the dark web looks like. Isn't that horrible? How are we going to catch a terrorist of the future uh, if, if, we're, if we're doing that, that kind of thing? So it's really worrying that we're building this monster that's in denying it. But I think there is the possibility, I don't know if you want to click on any of these links there, we'll all click on those ones. <laughs> That's not what we want to do. So I think, uh, just to show, there's the iCocaine one, Pharma Master. Uh, let's see what I clicked on next. See there? Oh yeah, well, credit cards. <laughs> credit card numbers, they're all on the, the dark web and so on. So that could be the world that we're creating because we're now allowing people to do anonymized transactions. So what I'd like to present to you is a model of the future and it's that. So I think this is what the blockchain acts and this is what the UK will implement in countries around the world. We will implement an anonymized, resilient, completely distributed ledger that has something on it that looks like garbled garbage that we can't make any sense of at all. If we do want to make a, so something, we can put our identity on it, but try not to if we, if we can. And then what we build is upper layers that start to regulate and start to build our world. So in anti-money laundering, every single bank must, must store a ledger which actually shows the transactions that are made and gives the linkages to the transactions on the blockchain. I know if you know, I, I as a child remember in Falkirk there was a thing for the tourist agency, you press the button on oh, something, uh, probably not, you have no idea what I'm talking about here. You press the button and the little lights go on if you want to find the toilets in the area, press the button and the little lights go on. Can everybody remember that? Yeah. Just yeah. one or two. <laughs> John Groats. John Groats, yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing. So to me, that looks like that. Ah, press a button, but it's either the bank or law enforcement or Bob who presses the button and who has the key uh, and enables the shining of the light to actually show all of his transactions. And for healthcare, we can create, the NHS would have to create its own ledger that was secure that would allow Bob to be traced within besides that. I think that's a world that starts to interest people and starts to look like a, a real world. So I think cryptography has the opportunity to rebuild a new world. I'm not a, an evangelist, <laughs> please don't see me like that, uh, but I think it has the opportunity. So what I'd like to do is hopefully there hasn't been a power failure in Merkiston, I think there has been somewhere, I'd like to get your phones out now. And uh, there's a t-shirt in this for you. I'm a bit worried that the network connection might have gone. So uh, this might not work. Uh, but hopefully it will. And I think I might have lost my internet connection. That's not good. Uh, just let's see if this could work. I can turn my wife on. Again. Is the internet connection gone? Is it working? Yeah. Yep. Right, okay. <coughs> Use virus. Use virus. Yeah, <laughs> 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 uh, I'm a professor. I, I know it's pretty wacky, I'm a professor, being able to do techie things like uh, that. that. Usually we live in clouds somewhere and stuff like that. I don't know the practical things. They work quite hands up. So go on, go on, go on, go on. Get your mobile phone out. Uh, there's a t shirt in there. If you get your phone, I don't know if you've got a connection. Uh, let's see a few cats. <laughs> Please, just one cat up here. Something to do with cats. Uh, is this not working? Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, cats. That's good. 
You'll get your phone out, there's a t shirt in this uh, for you uh, as well. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got 11 people in We've got a little buffer, that's good. This is about thumbs down, you know. It's <laughs> I can't take negative feedback. Okay, so so we're getting there. There's a t-shirt. So who is the crypto brain of this audience? Who is the who's been listening? <laughs> that's uh, that's fine. So we've got uh, we've got enough. Okay, everybody connected that wants to be connected. Good. So hopefully this is going to work. Are your students allowed to take part? Yeah, every student. There's no bias. What about that staff? There's no, there's no bias in here at all. Uh, you just embarrass yourself if you come last. I'm just one of ourselves. Okay, first question. Ah, oh, it's just not working. Oh, it's connecting last. <laughs> oh, 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 that's what happens when you rely on uh, technology. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you what, let's use my phone. Is everybody getting the connection? Okay. Okay. So don't swear. <laughs> Give yourself a nice name. Don't don't swear. No colloquialisms and things like that. Get yourself get yourself a little student. Who's, who's the robot guy? It's cool. <laughs> who's, who's this one? Who's, who's that? Who's that? Okay. Right. Okay. What? Wow. Oh, there's a man a robot. Okay, so you're, you're all there, we're all ready to go. So who's going to be the, uh, who's going to be the, the crypto? I love this guy here. Who's this? <laughs> That's you. Good. I'm waiting for you. Oh, come on, come on. please, let us let this, let this work. It uh, should work. should work okay. Let's put the coolest thing here. It's already a question for you. <laughs> oh, she's really <laughs> Right, who's the A and RSA? Uh, Leonard uh, Adaman, Leonard Alderman, Len Ackerman, Larry Adaman, or Lizzie Adaman? Well done. Didn't even count that one. That's it. Nobody said Lizzie. That's good. <laughs> if you see the photos, there's no Lizzie there, that's, that's for sure. It's the big guys. Okay, uh, fake bell is doing well, that's good. <laughs> and uh, that's good. Yeah, we're up to question four, that's a bit worrying. But I don't know that's... <laughs> okay, so we've got 10 pages in there, so we'll just try the next one, which is not a public encryption key method. <coughs> RSA, electric curve, El Camo, or AES. Oh, I got you there. El Gamo is a, is a public encryption method. And uh, quite a good one. So ES is the answer there. Who have got uh, electric curve? Was it listening? <laughs> so there's some people that were sleeping through my whole presentation. <laughs> so, that's, that's a pretty good hit rate for most of my classes. <laughs> okay, so who, who was the crypto genius for that one? And that's Colin is there. Oh, the fastest. And uh, what pad? Bill. That's me. See, I'm doing it. Willie F. Pola, Pola, Pola Hop. And uh, Fake Bill. Fake Bill did well. That's, that's good. And the next one. Oops. I've got a phone to one question. Too many there. Okay, question five. Okay, Bob wants to send out some bitcoins. Which key does he use to allow the transaction? His private key, his public key, Alice's private key, or Alice's public key? I did that outline it, I think. Oh, who said Alice's private key? For goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Those two people shall come up the front of the <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. There's a fundamental flaw that I want to think about, those two people. 
and, and I want to, to hand the video off one more next week. <laughs> so Bob signs with his private keys. Alice's public key, not in a million years uh, does that uh, happen uh, to them. So you have been, most 21 of you were listening, and all the rest of you, it just went right over your heads. <laughs> As I expected. But that's fine. And uh, let's see, Hurricane Bobag. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry for just saying that. <laughs> uh, Eve, Eve was the fastest there, but Fake Bill is right up there winning uh, a long way. So, uh, which is not a token type. So I outlined three tokens. Which of these is not a token that we would look to in future? Access, security, utility. Or payment, mm -hmm. which is the, which is not one of the three tokens that the future will be built on. So well done. That's good. Uh, security token really needs to happen. Uh, utility should happen. Payment and its uh, access is the one. And uh, so let's see how we're getting on. And Ali is coming up there. Well done, it's fake bell again. Wow, that's good. This fake bell. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. There goes my identity, my signature, and everything. Uh, so, uh, yeah, with that. Roughly, how many bits does an electric car public key have? I did say it, so you have no excuses, but it probably went right over your head when I said it. 128, 256, 512, and. 1024. Haha, -ha. your private key, you aren't listening. <laughs> your private key is 256 bits. That's the gradient. You have an XY point that's up there, it's both of them, so it's 512 bits. That was difficult. Nobody did 128, so at least you weren't sleeping that much. <laughs> Okay, so there's one more question I think so you can get some beer after it. So you're quite happy with that. Don't you just want to come back to university and study? <laughs> <laughs> I never want to go back and get university ever again in my whole life. Uh, my money's on uh, Chijat. What does that say? Tijat? Is it? Jart. Ray Jaza and uh, that one that was there the last time, luckily, has fallen out of the top ten. <laughs> I don't know how to say that one. <laughs> you can't cut that, yeah. Oh, it's on the squeeze, yeah. So. Nobody outside Scotland would know what that was anyway. So. Okay, this is really difficult. For a 20 bit encryption key, how many keys are possible? Oh. If you say 20, then, then you are coming back to university right now. <laughs> Good, don't say 20. Uh, no. Power of 20 is a million. Yeah. I, should have, I should have said a gazillion and you would have said, yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's good. Okay, 2 to the power of 20. Remember, 2 to the power of 10 is 1k, 2 to the power of 20 is 1 meg. Sorry, I grew up in a time with 16 meg on a computer these days, so I cannot know about these things. Right, so who's the winner? Hopefully it's not that one that we saw before. I'm hoping I have to announce that one. So let's see who's, who's the crypto genius and, uh, and has been absolutely listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Can you tell us what that says? Can you tell us what that says? I'm sorry? What, what does it say? Uh, uh, sorry? Uh, the, the name there is Raymart because it looks like a Pokemon deposit. Wow. Everybody got that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I won't choose the leaderboard because uh, with 2030, uh, that, that one there, no one outside Scotland would ever get what that says there. But uh, thanks very much for the presentation. Go and get some beer now. And <laughs> Go, Adrian, go. Go, Adrian.